Today I'd like to talk to you about maximising the benefits of your solar system. After investing in solar power, it, surely it makes sense to achieve the best return you can on that investment. Too often I see people think that, well, solar panels are on the roof and the job's done. Sure, you will get some benefit, uh, but you're not actually maximising that benefit. And after spending a good sum of money on a, on a decent installation, surely it's worth making that effort. So, what are the options there to maximise that benefit? Well, there are some things you can do that really don't cost anything at all. It's just a question of reorganising routines or habits and getting settled into that process and, and getting the benefits from there on. And there are some that don't, do cost a few dollars, but um, you know it can be worth doing. So let's look at the things that don't cost money. The first one, the obvious one that everyone knows about, I'm sure, is operating electrical appliances during the day. Washing machines, dishwashers, dr clothes dryers, for example. Air conditioning whether it's a, a swampy or a reverse cycle, which obviously has benefits in winter when you're, when you're heating. Uh, pool pumps and, pool and spa pumps in particular, good big users of electricity and therefore worth making the sun do the work. Um, if you're out on the farm, irrigation pumps and water pumping, you know, consideration to be done during the day. So that's the obvious easy stuff to do. The next one's a little bit more difficult and that's basically choosing the right energy plan or the right retailer that you're gonna to use to, to charge you for the electricity or pay you for your feeding tariff. Back in July 2019, all the retailers had to start with the same reference price. They compete for your business on different levels of discount or benefits. And then when you put solar in the mix, you've got feeding tariff to consider as well. Generally speaking, if you want a high feeding tariff, you didn't get much discount. If you wanted a high discount, you didn't get much of a feed-in tariff. So it becomes obvious, it's fairly important to know what's actually going on in your property as far as the solar is concerned. So how do you find out what's going on? Well, there's two, two main areas involved. One that everyone has, the power bills. We get them every three months and you've got to pay your bill one way or the other and you can see what's going on from there. Basically, the only information you get is what you're actually exporting to the grid and what you're actually buying in from the grid. If you want a more refined process, well, using a monitoring, pro monitoring system makes all the difference. Most modern systems do have decent monitoring, some, more, some better than others. But basically what that allows you to do is actually analyse the data when you want, not have to wait for the bill to arrive every three months to try and make that decision. So it becomes quite, quite easy then to work out what you need to do and whether you need to have a high feed-in tariff or a low one. System monitoring data can provide more detailed information about what's imported and what's exported and at different times of the day. So it helps you decide when to run things as well, so it can be quite useful. Now let's look at the things that do cost a few dollars to actually implement. At the outset, I must stress it's pretty important to have a detailed analysis of what your solar production, your energy consumption, and your grid import and exports are before you actually go ahead and do something because it can influence how much you want to spend and save you from wasting money. The most obvious one that people understand and, and are aware of is the addition of a battery. Essentially, the battery is charged from the solar after the house consumption um, is catered for. And then when the sun goes down, the battery discharges to cover nighttime use. In terms of cost effectiveness, the greater the difference between the feed-in tariff that you're getting for what you export and the cost of the electricity that you're, you're buying in makes a difference to the actual return on your investment. Getting the optimum storage capacity of the battery that you need does require information about what your house is doing, how much you're exporting, how much you're importing. For example, there's no point putting a, a battery that has 30 and a half kilowatts of storage if you're only exporting four or five kilowatt hours a day. You'll never fill it and you'll never get the benefit of that battery. Another perhaps not so well known way of getting some more benefit out of your solar system is in relation to the use of a diverter in conjunction with electricity based hot water production. Water heating is probably the second largest segment of energy consumption, anywhere between 15 and 27 percent. Um, I've seen up to 50 percent in some cases, so it can be quite expensive. Generally, the energy, energy consumption for hot water production is charged at off-peak rates, uh, and this is shown on your bill as a controlled load, or CL1. An energy diverter is a sophisticated device that allows some of your surplus solar energy to be used for hot water heating during the day, instead of being sent to the grid. Again, as with choosing an energy plan or evaluating the, whether you want to put a battery on or not, it is really important to know what your consumption is for the hot water product consumption and the rate you pay. Uh, for example, if you're getting 16 cents per kilowatt hour as a feed-in tariff, 
and you're only paying 16 cents for your hot water. It's really a cost neutral thing, so it's no, not really worth the effort of, of making that change. However, if your feeding tariff is down at seven or eight cents and you're paying 16 cents for your hot water, well, it's a consideration. Again, if your water consumption is pretty high, um, it really does make sense to, to make that change and your return can be within two or three years quite comfortably. Another option in relating to the hot water production uh, is the installation of a, a heat pump. It's becoming more popular these days. Basically, a hot water heat pump is an efficient system that extracts thermal energy from the environment and uses it to heat water, offering up to 74% savings compared to the traditional hot water tank. Um, and when you combine that with solar production, uh, the savings can be even more. So if, it, if your water tank is coming to the end of its uh, life, well, maybe it's a, true, a good consideration to take on board. Um, the heat pump's connected to your normal electricity tariff and you can be basically controlled by a timer to allow it to operate directly from your solar system during the day. They're the options, how to maximise the benefit of your solar system. But you know what the main takeaway message is? And it really involves my most favourite maxim. You cannot manage anything that you don't measure. If you don't know what's happening from day to day as far as your energy use is concerned, well, any decision you make is going to be based on guesswork and that can be fraught with issues. Um, to make effective decisions, you must have a good understanding of what's actually happening in your property as far as consumption and, and your energy profiles and exports and imports. Now, if you have an old, older system that doesn't have suitable monitoring, well, we have solutions that can help you with that. So please contact our office and let us help you get the best out of your system.